My name is Tarmac, and this is my review of Maze on PC, as in the corn, not the method of keeping an irritating child busy with a crayon when you're out for dinner. All footage was recorded on PC via Steam on an i7-5820K, GTX 970, and 16GB of RAM running on a dedicated 7200RPM Seagate hard drive. The game is also available on the Humble Store and GOG with a base price of 20 bucks US. Review code was provided by the developer. Let's chat about the game in the comments or on Discord, link is in the description. Here we go. So, Maze. The Steam tagline is a first-person adventure game about what happens when two scientists misinterpret a memo from the US government and create sentient corn. That tells you everything and nothing about the game at the very same time. I don't mean to be cryptic, the game just defies some level of description. Maze is effectively a point-and-click adventure game done first-person in Unreal 4. You spend your time walking around what seems to be an abandoned cornfield and farmyard, complete with old tractor, barn full of mysterious things, picking up objects to rub against other objects in order to progress. The objects you pick up are frequent, being split between active objects that have a single use somewhere in the world and flavor text objects which give some added context to the world or just a bit of random humor, like picking up a rock that you name Jeeves. I need to be a bit negative here, and I want to couch that in a qualifier that there is more to this game than just gameplay loops, so stick around to the end if you can. The point-and-click adventure bit is bad. It's really bad. Not functionally, but rather bad in design. Unreal 4 is not a great engine for a point-and-click kind of game, because doing a standard click-and-drag from an item in your inventory to use it with another item is not possible without significant UI adjustments. Maze gets around this problem by having a specific table location, frequently throughout the world, where you place objects from your inventory in order to use them with another object, which feels a little bit janky. The game also actively highlights items that you need to pick up, as well as objects you cannot pick up but are interactable, in many cases showing a ghosted outline of what kind of object you need to place where in order to progress. For the most part, these point-and-click style barriers are fairly easy, and in my playthrough, the only times I got briefly stuck was when I didn't notice the glow of an item. And therein lies the problem. The game had trained me to expect certain things and look for a certain type of effect when trying to pick things up. As a result, I was far less careful and meticulous than I usually am with point-and-click games. So when I miss a particularly small item, I can very easily call that a fault with the game design. But let's talk about graphical presentation. There are some rough textures and graphical oddities where it comes to certain objects not lighting up properly, like these signs. But outside of some of those minor issues, the game is really quite atmospheric. You transition from the farm to an underground complex, and each area has a unique feel to it. With the farm having this heavy, derelict feeling that an old farm will often have, but completely changing down underground to a much more clinical, if sardonic, set of zones. You're also soon coming across the sentient corn, though nobody said anything about them being intelligent. I mentioned this as part of graphical presentation because the animations, facial expressions, and the artistic direction of the corn and a grouchy Russian teddy bear who for some reason starts following you around are really great. And finally, for graphical presentation, for performance, I very occasionally had frame rate drops below 60 on Ultra, though I did turn off all post-processing as it was giving me a headache. So for performance, it runs like most Unreal 4 games do. For sound, there isn't too much to speak of. The game has a rather droning bass sound that is used throughout the whole game, with the exception of an alternate version and power ballad at the end, which is also pretty good by the way. But I think that it's worth commenting on the voice acting. We have Vladdy, the Russian teddy bear. All of this is very stupid. <sighs> so, where do we go? Cornstalks galore. Is that a... It is. It's a helicopter! What? Da? Give me a ride, Mr. Helicopter! No, give me a ride! We can all fit just climbing! And especially the albino corn villain. I must say, I'm quite disappointed. I thought you were more clever, more interesting. But no matter. Now, your suffering will be so incomprehensible that your small mind will Stupid break! Stupid plant, why is your face like that? What is that? Your stupid face is very bad. Dumb plant. Is that on purpose? <laughs> In each case, the voices are quite frankly awesome. Where the game really shines, however, is in the storyline. Without spoiling anything important, you progress from a very serious and mysterious, almost horror-like abandoned farmyard into a massive underground facility inhabited entirely by walking corn, with one particularly garish albino stalk along the way. How they managed to make that transition through liberal use of flavor text items and a few character interactions kept me engaged. 
The combination of great voice acting, expressive characters, and the fact that Maze is completely without logic and realism, but makes up for it with attitude and creativity really made it at the very least an interesting experience despite my other complaints. They even went as far as to include an almost Dance Dance Revolution style minigame towards the end. It's also worth mentioning that it doesn't overstay its welcome in a similar way to Portal as the game clocks in at around 4 hours, but rather clearly had a huge amount of work done to put this title together. I started this piece off by saying that the quote on the game being an adventure game about the scientific creation of sentient corn both tells you everything and nothing about the game at the same time. This is where I need to lay down those qualifications. The adventure game part of this is not particularly well thought out, in large part I think due to the decision to go with a first person view, though there is something valuable to that choice towards the end of the game as well. However, it went from a lackluster puzzler with a heavy mystery tone to it into this ridiculously wacky storyline that I was having a blast with by the end. Yeah, it's a bit short, but to me, I think any longer would have ruined the experience for what it was. Maze can be said to be similar to something like the Stanley Parable in that it's an exceptional experience that people should have, even if the basic game bit isn't that great. I mean, in what other game can you get insulted by a Russian teddy bear, dance with corn, interrupt a tea party, laugh at the hatred two scientists have for one another, and battle a giant albino corn stalk with a lisp? It does enough right that even with its problems and a $20 US price tag, I feel like my life is somehow more complete now that I've heard the favorite song of corn stalks everywhere. This is the first instance I can think of where I've heavily criticized almost every aspect of a game, and then still gone on to say, I recommend this title. And the entire reason I say that is because I enjoyed the storyline that much and laughed out loud at my computer, which is something I haven't done in years. Maze absolutely relishes in amazing ridiculousness, with an ear for great VO, more than just a kernel of atmosphere, and an ending that is the best in its field. My name is Tarmac, thanks for checking out my review of Maze by Finish Line Games. It's up on Steam, GOG, and the Humble Store for a base price of 20 bucks US. If you enjoyed the review, feel free to share it, subscribe if you haven't, and swing by Discord by clicking the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.